Welcome to Taylor's Trick Taking Table. I'm Taylor Scrooge, and today we'll be covering Ghosts of Christmas by Taiki Shinzawa. Before we get started though, I want to point out this is a paid preview by the wonderful folks at BoardGameTables.com who's running a Kickstarter for Ghosts of Christmas right now. And that being said, we've actually covered this game in the past, and it was called Time Palatrix, and I loved it then. So before you start thinking that the money's changed me, what's that? We got the money? Oh yeah, 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 I'm rich now. No more trick take reviews. All we're gonna be reviewing from here on out is miniatures, baby. This is Taylor's mini table. And Taylor, I'm the ghost of Christmas past. What? I'm here to show you the past. Oh no, where are we? Look how much you were enjoying time palatrix. Oh shoot, I really was loving playing that game. Oh. Now where are we? I'm the Ghost of Christmas present, and look how much you're enjoying Ghosts of Christmas today. Oh shoot, I really love playing that game too. Now I'm the future ghost. Future ghost? Are you gonna show me in the future loving playing Ghosts of Christmas? No, I'm supposed to show you what uh, BGG Top 25 looks like if you don't review Ghosts of Christmas. Oh no, 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 okay, okay, send me back, send me back, send me back, send me back. Oh, I'm back, there's still time, okay. The hook to Ghosts of Christmas is, you play two tricks out of order. Everyone has a set of tricks that they're playing to, but you get to choose which trick you want to play to when. However, after everyone's played to their tricks, then it evaluates in order. Super wacky concept, let's go to the table and I'll show you how to play. The deck in Ghosts of Christmas is made up of four suits numbered 1 through 12. The red is the trump suit. Also, 1 through 3's of each suit is removed for a 3 player game. Here we have a game of Ghosts of Christmas set up for three candy players. So each player is going to get 12 cards, a puzzle piece set where they'll play the three tricks to, these dials which will denote what the suit is for that slot, and then there's going to be a score track, and then kind of bidding tokens. So starting with a start player, this player is going to look at their hand and bid how many tricks they think they're going to win out of the 12 that are going to be played. So looking at Candy Cane's hand here, they see they've got a fair amount, they got three trump and some twelves, maybe they think they're going to win four tricks. So they're going to take four doors and put them right above them like that. Next, reindeer's going to bid. So they'll look at their cards and maybe they think they're going to win three tricks, but they're not a hundred percent sure. Maybe they think they might win four tricks. So what's really cool in this game is you can take one of these orange doors. And what that means is it allows you to have a little bit more leniency. So now reindeer will get points if they win three or four tricks, as opposed to candy cane over here, where they only get points if they win exactly four tricks. But we'll get into scoring later. So now snowman bids and they're gonna bid five. So they're gonna take five doors and put that right above them. Now starting with Candy Cane here, they're going to lead the first trick and they can play to any of these slots because no one's played to them yet and they can play whatever card they want. So maybe they want to play this yellow 12 trying to win the pass slot. So what that does is it makes yellow be the lead suit for the passed slot. Now it's reindeer's turn to play. So what they can do is they can play whatever they want to either the present or the future. But if they play to the past, they have to play yellow if they have it. So since they don't want to play yellow maybe, they'll play this six green to the present. So that sets the present to green. And the suits are a little off in this prototype, but let's just go with colors here. That is green for the present. So now coming to snowman here, they can either play a yellow to the past, a green to the present, or anything they want to the future. So looking at their hand, they realize they only have one yellow. So what's really cool is they would be forced to play it if this was a normal trick taker to the first trick if this was their hand and this was just forced yellow. However, they can play this yellow to the future here and that sets the future suit to yellow. So now it's Candy Cane's turn, and they can either play yellow to the future or green to the present. So looking at their hand, maybe they play green 11 to the present, thinking they can win. After Reindeer plays to the future with a yellow, now it comes to Snowman, and they don't have any yellow. So what's awesome now is they can play this trump color to the past, because they don't have any yellow in their hand. After three tricks have been played, then they evaluate in order. So it was led yellow in the past by Candy Cane. However, it was won 
by Snowman with the 10 Trump. Since Snowman won, they actually lead to the present. They're leading green, so it doesn't really change much because it was already led green, but we'll show an example in the future how there's some really cool things that can happen if the person who no one expects to win can win and then lead something different than what was played. But we'll go into that in the next example. For now, it was led green and Candy Cane won with the highest of the lead suit, so they'll toss a wreath on theirs. So then they lead yellow, and it was won over here by Rudolph with the 11 yellow. So then Rudolph will be the lead for the next three tricks. You would clean these and then play the next three tricks in the same way. Let's go over a really cool example of what makes this game wild though. So rewinding a little bit, let's say it was coming to the final card in the round for the snowman, but let's say they didn't have any green in their hand. So in this hypothetical, they could have played just a blue seven, right? And now, when the things evaluate, things would evaluate much differently. So it would have been lead yellow by Candy Cane and won with Trump for the snowman. Then, instead of this green being played for the snowman, they actually lead blue because they won the last trick in the past. So in the present, when they lead blue, everyone is off suit. So even though the reindeer player was the first to play into the present and made it green, what's wild is Snowman won the first trick, so they're the person who leads this. So they were off suit, had no green in this new example, and they played blue, so now blue is the lead suit, and these two players are off suit. So then the Snowman character wins again. You can do some really wild things like that in this game, and that's what makes it so much fun. So you would play four of these three round tricks, in a hand. And after those 12 tricks, you would see who hit their bid. So let's go into scoring now. Jumping ahead, if this was all the scoring that everyone had, you get two points for every trick you hit of your bid if you didn't take a leniency token. So over here, the snowman bid five, they got exactly five, they would get 10 points and they would go up on this track. So maybe the snowman was blue, they'd come right up here. Now, if you miss your bid by any amount, so maybe you're under it or even over it, you will get zero points. So that's zero points in this case and zero points in this case. However, if you took a leniency token, you can get three or four, but you get one point each. So this is four points and this is three points. If the player would have gotten that, that's again, that's zero. And if they would have gotten that, only two, that's also zero. So the leniency token gives you some agency and some flexibility. After scoring, you would clean everything up, all the cards, all the bids and everything. Then you would play more rounds per player. So in a three player game, you would play this two more times and whoever has the highest points in the end wins. There's also a variant that adds the beyond slot. So now you have four slots to play to. And with this, you can either play three cards to the four slots, so you'll have an empty slot, or you can play where you play four cards to each slot. And both are super fun. So that is Ghosts of Christmas, and I love this game so much because what it does is it straddles the line perfectly between giving players choice and then also restricting them in interesting ways. On the choice side, players can choose whichever of the three tricks they want to play to, and when they're bidding, they can choose to have leniency or not, and I love that. But then the restriction, right? If you miss your bid at all, you get zero points. And then you only can play to those three tricks, which is just enough, but not too much to kind of make players sit too long or have analysis paralysis. So the game moves at such a quick pace and players are crunching on this puzzle at the same time. The other thing I love is that hands are broken up into kind of mini hands, you know? It's three tricks, then three tricks, then tri three tricks. And what's fun is if the first three tricks or the second three tricks don't quite go your way, you get a whole clean slate for the next set of three. And it feels so good when maybe three didn't go your way and you come to the next three and you, you're like, okay, I can make these work. I also love the moves players can do. So you can short suit yourself in interesting ways, or you can make it to where if you're winning too many tricks for your bid, you can kind of maybe play your trump in a delayed fashion to try to lose more than you wanted or more than you expected. And it's so cool to give players that much agency in their hand. And in the variants where you can play four cards at a time or three of four in the beyond, gives players even more decisions. And it's kind of mind blowing when you get to that level. One of the things I love about Ghosts of Christmas is that it took one of the maybe less than perfect parts of Time Pal Tricks for me, which was the production, which made sense because it was an indie game coming out of Japan, but it took that production and made it so amazing. 
So I love the fact that the bids are doors now that you put reefs on when you hit that trick, or the fact that these cards now pop with this amazing artwork. And I just think usability wise, the fact that you have a puzzle piece for your three tricks, that's super clear and helpful for the players. And then even these dials are super nice to be out there on the board and really let everyone know, hey, that's the suit that you need to follow for that certain past, present, or future. And overall, they just knocked out of the park with this production. What's awesome about Ghosts of Christmas is they've added a no bidding variant, which is super helpful for those players who love the trick system of the game where you can play out of order, but thought the bidding might be a little too harsh because sometimes it can be pretty brutal. <laughs> so it's cool because you can kind of onboard players or maybe teach them just that side of playing out of order and then show them the bidding and kind of have a cool variant for players who thought maybe the bidding just wasn't for them. As an aside, I love the fact that these amazing Japanese games are coming over to the States and getting more play and getting more popularity in the States. I have said a few times when I cover some smaller indie games that I I just don't know how to help in terms of availability. It's super tough to get these games. And I really hope this is the start of a trend where more and more of these amazing Japanese indie games are coming into American markets and getting played more. And that is Ghosts of Christmas, and I love this game so much. They took a game I already loved, Time Paladrix, and they just they ironed out everything I had wrong with it. It was funny because I wanted to give Time Paladrix like the best award of all time, <laughs> but they're just small things that were holding it back just a little bit for me. And they took those small things and they just cleaned it up so nice. I love the production. I love what they've done with the variants on this. And I just have to give Ghosts of Christmas a seal. So, and thanks so much for watching.